okay so uh, who is new those people who have joined uh, the class for the first time could you please introduce yourself felistus i am hello dog yes i'm felistus piri uh a master's student studying uh, MBA in data and uh, data analytics. Said okay, by me, sir, and I'm from Zambia. That's awesome. And Paul has left. OK, James, Simon and Mohammed, we were there in the first class also, so that's not a problem. Let's start. Uh, I'm sharing my screen. So in the previous class, we talked about what is entrepreneurial leadership all about? Just an introduction sort of thing. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I have uploaded already uploaded this in a uh, slide on your classroom channel. I mean, when you log in into your Teams, it is there as a study material. Now we, if we strolled up a bit, we talked about what we have to discuss in the further program you know the whole module we talked about what is entrepreneurial leadership what are the characteristics and traits of an entrepreneurial leader and what do they do and what entrepreneurial leaders do in terms of their practices so that they can incorporate some of the abilities of theirs in employees as well so we talked about that and then I gave you some examples that who can be classified as an entrepreneurial leader. And we talked about these American giants like famous people who had who have done something which can be acknowledged. Now I also asked uh, you to research so that you can come up from your you know region or culture. Some of the personalities uh, you know who you, we can look up to that what they have done in terms of business entrepreneurial leadership right so i'm uh, i'm understanding that those who are new can struggle but recording session recorded session is already there you can go uh, through it as many times as you want and you can reach out to me anytime whenever you have doubt you can you know, just post your message in the chat box and I'll uh, reply to your queries. Is it fine? Hello? Is it fine? Yes, Doc, it's fine. So now see here. If we talk about, you know, whenever we study something in business, in fact, uh, for that matter, in anything we need to know, we have to feed our mind that why it is important for us to study, to, you know, incline towards it. So there is a significance of entrepreneurial leadership in the business world as well. Sorry. Has someone said something? Just raise your hand if you have any doubt so that I can acknowledge. OK. What we have here is. See, entrepreneurial leader has both of the traits. One, he is or she is an entrepreneur. And then he or she at the same time is a leader as well. So both of the traits 
when combined gives us this beautiful module which can be applied in our you know in business world so it is important because if you are that person who has more than one value to create who that then you can be proved as an asset for the organization you see so what you can do if you are an entrepreneur and leader you can inspire creativity and innovation see if you are an artist and i'm not if you show me your work i would say oh that is fine i but i cannot really you know uh, admire it as per the extent uh, to which it should be admired you only know the you know quality of artistry or what is being applied only you can comment on it but as a non artist person i cannot do it so if i want someone you know in my team to lead that in the manner that obviously business profit is there entrepreneurship is there and then team is going very smoothly that is leadership quality is there then i need to know whether it is not only about you know the bookish language that we have understood entrepreneurship is this leadership is this no we should know to implement it as well if i am a creator i know the value of creativity if i am an innovator i know the value of innovativity and then only i can inspire both of the qualities in my team as well so the significance of entrepreneurial leadership is that it inspires creativity and innovation the person having both of these two qualities is ready to take up the risk be it in the change management when you know we have expatriate managers expatriate managers means let's say if you are working in africa and the company in which you are working is uh, having roots in another countries also so you can be sent to another countries if you as a human resource required there so be it for training purpose or to train someone you may be required so if you would go there and you have to survive in a very different culture so if you have that adaptability first of all your manager needs to think that who has to be chosen to be sent because it has risk we cannot send that person who we we know that it is very non adaptive in our team it is really this person is really an introvert so we have to think twice to send that person but still a leader has to take that decision uh, by taking the risk and doing experiment so if you are an entrepreneur and leader you will foster that culture that i want to take risk and i would allow my team as well to take uh, you know to to experiment to do to take initiative and do mistakes and learn from those mistakes this is one of the quality and this can be learned once you have these qualities and you are trained by the person who has this quality now those entrepreneurial leadership aspects if we know if we teach our team about these aspect they need not to be an entrepreneur leader to learn these aspects at least they should be aware what is happening so that that feature unity motivation those influences that should come up in the team and team members should run a team accordingly okay so that there will not be a burden on one person that leader only they should be they should run by the single objective by the same goal and with the same features though everybody is not same but at least we can uh, you know we can entertain that culture where these skills can be uh, can be flourished then we have this quality very very important and we really want us to be treated this way what it is put people first and manage in a relational way so of course you know you cannot say um, you know there was a boss of mine uh, last to last year what happened there was a theft at my house and uh, i uh, took a leave that was unplanned leave at my work 
so you know when i rejoined after a few days uh, after you know when i was struggling to cope up with this situation what my boss said you know there was another employee of mine there was a death which happened in uh, in uh, the family there was sudden death demise of uh, the person still that person that employee came so thief uh, the theftness is nothing in front of you know death of somebody so you should follow the rules and you cannot take unplanned leave so i immediately took this decision to uh, leave that job because when you are not um, what is it called respected and valued and even if there is some emergency your boss is not that empathetic enough then you cannot survive in long run so as an employee i think this way if you want to build a team as an entrepreneur as a as a leader you should know that putting people first will not only give you the business profitable business but will also give you the blessings of those people uh, you know you have to think sometimes emotionally as well when you are um, a leader there so try to put people first and you will see uh, the change in your team your team will you know do anything for you if you uh, you, you put them first and they can uh, go to any extent to fulfill uh, the goal of the team and uh, there is unity uh, solidarity what we can say solidarity uh, which can create that relation and then you will see that results are also getting better what is next is if we know if we hire someone with entrepreneurial leadership aspect then we know that that person will bring opportunities to us okay so because that person who is having entrepreneurial leadership qualities proactively identifies where the opportunity is even from the threats from the weaknesses that person turn those problems into the opportunities so you will get the advantage out of it also see this is what we are studying here na it has many aspects social aspect that you know bringing a team together manage people a human resource aspect then you have to deal with your customers so customer orientation that is marketing aspect every aspect is there in the entrepreneurial leadership okay so we have to uh, look likewise we have to consider all of those aspects so that person should be a leader in all of these fields he or she should know how to deal with customers even if see if even if you are not a sales manager you are not in the sales team but you should know how to deal with the customers tactfully then only you can clarify your team that you know this is where you are going right and this is something which you should stop doing okay this is the feedback which i am giving to you all these things are interlinked and that's where this entrepreneurial leadership comes into picture you need it to hold yourself responsible for delivering what customers need what your people need all these things are interlinked okay then what we have is leadership skills are very necessary and when you are a leader you also culminate these leadership skills in your team you cultivate these skills how see you have to change you have to manage the change there may be times for example you know this covid era this horrific era when it came uh, we all had to work remotely so if i am that company which is not that tech savvy i i do not you know even in my wildest dreams i have not uh, considered this bit that we would have to work uh, from home so if you have to change this uh, you know uh, all of sudden you have to incorporate this change you have to be ready now people are getting ready because they are aware that covid like things can happen but before that were we able to do it no so we should know how to manage that change if we are having those dynamic situations be it environmental like outside the enterprise or inside any team change department change or product change market change 
we should be ready for it and for that to to keep your uh, team's morale up you know you can you have to show them the your leadership skills that we are together in this and we will do it so those uh, management things you should have in terms of leadership skills you should view all the situation as learning opportunities you must have seen that advertisement on television where you know there was um, i think international women day and uh, this ad was talking about one situation where a team is sitting boss came that that was a female boss and uh, boss was started yelling how uh, you know i don't like these things uh, how can you do it you you have to do it all together from the scratch uh, and uh, she threw the papers um, you know this was the situation then everybody when she left everybody was talking about her oh this lady is you know uh, getting into our nerves she cannot do anything right in the righteous manner but she always tell us how to do it and how to do that so when she left there was a shift in the perspective that we should stop telling people or giving judgment towards people there was one lady who stood up and said see boss we should not find anomalies in our boss we should see from where she is coming and we have to do the things like uh, in her way so because she is handling our team so we have to have that one person in our team even if we as a leader not present in the team that person can take our side because not because of uh, you know because of the favoritism or biasness but because we have given that freedom liberty and perspective to people to see the both sides of the coin this is what we require and hence you should give them if you have a boss and you are also a boss so you should never complain about your boss in front of your team this is a chain so you should know every time if things are not going your way you should tell you should tell to yourself that see this is a learning opportunity uh, if you believe in god then say that you know god has given this uh, opportunity to learn or if you are atheist or whatever you can say that you know every time when challenge is thrown then only we can recover then only we can cope up and uh, survive like anything so this is a leadership attitude when you yeah, when you view all the situations as learning opportunities okay that means you should have a growth mindset never ever tell uh, you know your weaknesses to your team you can uh, because you know this uh, this breaks down their moral so it is not that you are uh hiding something from your team but is that if you want to create that growth mindset environment you should always talk positive you have to confront reality but with that growth mindset that even if we have the plan a has been failed we should come up with plan b or c or as many as we want but we should not give up this is a growth mindset and for that we have to be future focused okay that this is the present and we have to build our future we are responsible for our future we have to learn from our past we should not be stuck in our past so all these things show that you are a strong personality you have those leadership skills and this leadership you know we don't only require in business we need it in our personal life also there are times when we you know break down like hell so we have to come up with some ideas so change has to be started from us when we are the initiator of that change and we accept it with you know with our uh, arms then it is fine and then we can motivate others also to do likewise so entrepreneurial aspect gives you business theory and leadership talks about the personalities and this is how we should um, we should uh, you know accept these skills and we should 
develop these skills in our team so what you you can say about entrepreneurial leadership it is center to growth okay it it is very very important for growth because ultimately it helps developing talent okay it helps in finding out uh, what can we do in terms of changing products of and services in our com company deliver the efficiency getting the output efficiency means how much input you are providing to get a particular output okay and hence ultimately we will get the market share through this so this is the significance okay are we on the same page everybody yes yes madam yes, yes madam great great now here is the task for you guys oh this i have given here one scenario please have a look read it imagine a well established family owned business and it has been operated operating successfully for decades but in recent years it has faced challenges challenges in staying competitive in rapidly changing market okay now business this business is known for traditional approaches there is a hierarchical management style that means centralization of power okay there is a top one topmost management then lower one then uh, managers then workers then laborers and all those stuff so they are struggling to have innovative business practices because they are using traditional approaches so what are the challenges in front of them first they have declined market share the profitability is declining every day and every now and then there is resistance to change okay they their employees don't want to change their management is like stagnant they don't want to uh, change anything and there is lack of innovation and adaptability now you tell me think it think for few ways for 5 minutes and tell me if you are there if you were to come up with some situation as an entrepreneur leader what you would do think about it and then we will discuss jot down the points what you can come up with apply all those skills and pointers which we have started so far ready who wants to go first okay uh, let me okay, try uh, let me try okay yes uh, when i look at the company the uh, the first thing that i want to i want to do if i have to make some changes to help the company looking at the challenges um the first thing is um some kind of uh training or some kind of change management uh procedures that are put in place first of all to change the culture of the company to bring up to bring uh the company to understand the new ways of doing things as far as uh business is concerned 
that is uh, using trainings um, so that the change management is going to be better. Yeah, so we have to educate, educate the company to understand the new ways of doing things. And then secondly, um, maybe to, since the market is changing, uh, we have uh, areas like uh, online and digital marketing. So maybe we can employ digital marketing strategies to see how the company can improve on its profit profitability and leverage the market share of the internet. And then right. um, looking at uh, innovation, one of the innovations is we have already talked about the, the digital marketing space and also uh, teach them to be adaptable so that they can be customer centric. So that anytime, rather than being, um, being that kind of linear mindset, we can, all, we can try to teach the company to be agile, which means that as the, as, the, as the customers are changing their mindset, we also adapt with what the customers are, are, are bringing. So we do some kind of a lot of uh, market intelligence and also business intelligence into play. So that's what I, will, I think I will do to help the company manage its challenges. That's awesome. What's your name? It is Edmond, Edmond Gaben. Okay, Edmond. So you have done a great job. Is there anybody else who wants to put, uh, who wants to uh, comment on this? Anybody wants to try? Okay. Or do you think? Uh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So for me, uh, one, uh, I'll look at the, I'll look at the hierarchical management style, okay. which is, which basically, which basically creates the bureaucracy. So uh, okay. bureaucracy, uh, bureaucracy most of the time is an enemy of uh, innovation and uh, uh, coping to styles because uh, coping to a certain coping to a uh, coping to a suitable management style because the bureaucracy for a decision to be made it has to go through a number of people which delays the decision processing so for me I'll, I'll go for it try to change it around so that at least uh, they we develop another uh, management style. I just say develop reduce the hierarchical management style, so that it will be an open uh, management style. As such, we can incorporate in the innovation and uh, the the motivation and the innovation type of working. Uh, the other thing is uh, the other thing will be uh, doing uh, like a sort analysis to see. Uh, because of the declining market share, uh, I, I will look at the sort analysis to see uh, which are, which ones now are my which ones now are my uh, which ones are our weaknesses, which are our uh, plot, which are our opportunities, and what are the threats, so that I can right. have like a deep deep root analysis, which will help right. for me to uh, yeah sure. The other thing is um, on, uh, modernizing the uh modernizing which would be like trying because since these ones are uh, just using like they are they have to uh, uh, they are struggling to adapt to new technologies it's a matter of training them to uh modernize how they do their things so that at least they can get incorporated the other thing is because, because this is the family only business it means they have got a, a certain what we call an organization culture a culture in which they work in, which is like a family blended culture. So I also infiltrate, I also infiltrate the idea of employing other external, uh, to employing external persons which can come into this family business, so that at least they try to work it around to dissolve the the family culture. If this culture has been changed, maybe there can be a new culture of uh, innovations because this one they won't be attached to the family so much. They will be like the employees who are working to get paid. So thank you and over. Great, great. Uh, what's your name? My name is Keith from Malawi. 
Okay, so keep excellent. Uh, I think you have covered most of the things. So you, you and admin, uh, you were done. Is there anybody else who wants to contribute? Maybe I can try in a few ways, maybe uh, three or four ways. Okay. Yes. Um, I feel that uh, first of all, I will help the company to realize the importance of not holding on to the past traditional way of managing the family business. Because of okay. uh, already the challenge they have is the market shares reducing, the profit reducing. So if they continue holding on to the past traditional ways of managing the business, it means that the profit and the market shares will continue to dwindle. Now, right. they need to uh, modernize by using the modern um, technological means of running the business. And uh, just as you have taught us today, they need to think futuristic. If not, the business will lose out a lot. And also the leadership, uh, the management must not become rigid even to resisting the challenge. Because the biggest problem in this family business is they are resisting the change. So if they want to have change in the market shares in the profit, they have to adapt to change. Any decline, any failure, mostly is as a result of uh, our party uh, refusing to adapt to change. So they need to adapt to change and begin to think futuristic for the for the big family business. Thank you so much. That would be my submission. That's great, Simon. So I think we have covered everything, but uh, just to add on, like you could have made it a structured answer by seeing this scenario. See, this is a family owned business and they have talked about challenges in terms of traditional approach. They are not ready to accept any innovation and that's why they are facing, they are lagging behind in the competition. So if you can divide it into the problems, the pointers in the problems and then classify the uh, department uh, which will handle that problem. For instance, firstly, because it is a family business, that means family is uh, taking decision. It means there is something related with culture. So first heading will be we have to cultivate an innovative culture. And for that it is required. For example, if I have a family, uh, we are five members operating a business and we are all seeing and we don't want to accept any change. So we should at least hire, you know, in the top management or we should do it in, in, in terms of board of members or something like that. Where one person who is different from us who can cultivate an innovative culture can join our team and build that team, uh, build the team, a new team based on that change culture. OK, so we should cultivate this. How we can do it? Maybe we can have that CEO or top management which can support innovation or we can create cross functional teams where Let's say if one team is having one skill, then another one is having another. So diverse skills will be there and we should brainstorm new ideas. We should try to implement those ideas by having maybe you must have heard about Kanban, K-A-N-B-A-N, -A -A Kanban style of management, where we I'll, I'll show you how you can do it uh, with a software, uh, with an application. So uh, we can create cross functional teams when it comes to innovative culture or if let's say our, um, we are not coming up with any ideas, neither our employees are suggesting anything. So we can have this, uh, what is it called? Reward based system that if you will come up with a new idea and you try to make a plan of implementing it, then we will provide you some sort of reward. So by having it, it will reinforce 
our employees motivate them maybe extrinsically uh, to perform those things then of course it is seen that you know uh, this this was done for traditional approach and hierarchical management style now for the innovation what type of innovation can we have digital transformation as um, you told uh, admin the digitally uh, we have to in fact you all have talked about this digital transformation so under this category what all we can have we can train employees as you said in digital skills we can have maybe if we have budget then we can have uh, chief digital officer who can lead this transformation who can take care of it we can create a, a different department for this or we can you know invest in technology or digital tools uh, which can align with our objectives to perform our work in a better and easier manner and uh, this is how we can uh, serve many customers as compared to the traditional way of thing then what we need the most important thing is leadership development why leadership development because uh, you know there is a lack in this uh, in this company where people are uh, you, this is family owned business and they are following the same thing they have been following the same thing for decades so there is something change should be there in the leadership as we mentioned it in the ceo point of innovative culture also but here in leadership development again mentorship is provided it has to be provided where we every now and then remind our people that see we have been doing this and these strategies are not working so let's try some different things otherwise company will stop working you will not you will be you know jobless and something sort some sort of motivation be it through reinforcement or uh, things like that we have to empower those uh, skills we have to empower our people with those skills so that they can accept that change we have to enhance in them that risk taking and adaptability skills that okay we are encouraging you come up with strategy we will uh, try to follow it if we see the pros and cons we will take calculative actions okay so you have to plan you have to make a contingency plan so that you can firstly find out all those strategies jot them down and see where you are lacking just like one of you said swot analysis so for that we need market research we have to have customer centric approach and we have to do competitive analysis see here competitive in a rapid they are not competitive enough so we have to see what sort of change that market is having is there a launch of new products is there change in product line diversification happening penetration more exports and imports uh, are there which sort of thing which change is happening so that we can work around it okay so this is very general scenario which was given to you so if we do market research we would be able to know the changing customer needs and preferences what do they need if let's say we are in textile business so if, are they requiring Uh, those hand looms or the machine printed things so we have to work uh, likewise we have to develop our products and services so that those needs those researched outcomes can be catered okay so that those evolving demands can be catered and then we have to listen of course to our customers so all those things will come for this innovation and adaptability digital transformation and uh, risk taking ability the leadership level development has to be introduced for resistance to change and for market share and profitability market research is required is it fine do you all have pointed this out all the points have already been covered by you guys so well done it's just that i was giving you a direction so that you know you can write an structure a structured answer now see this was for first class because yesterday we were uh, going through slides and some of the slides were um, not covered so this was the homework for yesterday's one which i already uploaded on your teams the channel 
now you have to write a reflection what what has been done what have you learned so some sort of notes and how did you find just like we do in diary entry you have to write it in past tense what have you learned okay i have entered here i have given you some of the case studies you have to go through them you don't need to uh, tell me the answers at the moment because we have just touched the introduction part of entrepreneurial uh, leadership once we will be done with all of the concepts then i'll ask you questions from this but meanwhile you can go through these case studies now by now you have understood how, what is the significance of entrepreneurial leadership what are the aspects it 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 is um, it has so you have to explain in 200 to 250 words how it can drive innovation growth and success okay if you want you can take uh, real life examples from these case studies to highlight what is its importance are we all clear yeah it's okay yeah, yeah it's okay. okay great okay. great now coming to i hope you i hope you it's great i hope you upload the The, the, the that presentation uh, so that we can access it and we go direct into that link yeah yeah, yeah kit i have already uploaded let me show you where is it um, so if you go to your uh, this general team channel here in file section you will find the recording and then class materials here is class 1 and then i'll upload class 2 also after this class okay 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 all right that's great now great now i was uh, you remember during our conversation i was telling you that i'll show you one um application through which you can manage your teams i'm talking about you know small teams okay now tell me have you heard about trello T R E L L O, Trello. Yes, madam. Great. How many of you have heard about it? No. Okay. How many of you used it? Yeah, I've used it. I've used it sometimes to manage uh, tasks okay. and manage small okay, things. Okay, admin. Okay, admin. But still, I'm showing you maybe. Um, you will get to know some new things maybe so you can manage your team you can do time management so it is based on kanban style of management k a n b a n kanban style so what does it mean uh, let me log in so if you come to this page this is trello.com my screen is visible to you right yes. okay so i am logging in why is it taking ages so when i go to their website i can click on sign up ha huh? you can click on sign up and then once you have those login details you can logged in okay once you are logged in you you will see this interface so they have given us some templates if you want to have project management template kanban template all those sort of things so let me create a project management template for my team for all of us for example so here this is uh, uh, the guide they are telling you that you can have these sort of things but let's say 
you have this interface, you will cl click on create. OK, you have to start creating a board. Now you can give the title to this board, maybe entrepreneurial. Task two. And then you can set up the visibility. Do you want to keep it private or all of the members or in this Trello workspace with whom you have shared this board can edit this board? Or do you want to make it public because you are um, not a premium member? You are starting a free trial, so you can create up to five boards. Um, so that's fine. You have kept it and keeping it for workspace. Let's create. So this is my new. Board OK, now what I'll do or what I can do to manage team here. This is the first card. I'm. Writing a to do list. I'm adding the list here. What are you doing? And what is done? I've created these three cards. OK. Now what I can do. What are the tasks which I am supposed to do? Maybe going through the presentation. I'm listing here. OK. Then I want to add another thing that um, I have to do my homework or the assignment which is given to me. And so on so forth. Now. I'm clicking here in the going through the presentation thing. OK. Now you will see this interface. You can add members. With whom you want to share this card. That means if you are a manager, you are giving this particular task that going through the go through the presentation to particular member. Add that member to this card. OK. For example, if I want to add maybe myself to some different ID happening so I can add this. OK. Here the member is being added has been added. Now you can label it whether it is very important. You can classify a new label that it is important. And I'm giving the important uh, this color code. OK, and then you can create. So this is the important task which I have created here. Now. What else you can do? You can create a checklist that see. This first card which is going through the presentation. How many tasks? How many subtasks is it having? Maybe. Um, case studies. Then. You can add on the checklist. Once it is done, you can click that yes, case study is done. You can. Where is it? Case study one case study two. And then this is how you can keep on adding. You can assign it to someone that case study one. This person will do case study two. This person will do and you can assign the due date as well. So this is how you can create. Uh, you can manage teams and once it is done, you have team members. For example, you have added this. Once it is done, your team members can say that OK, it is done. That person can write here that first task is being done. In the activity section, that person can comment. Then you can allot the dates. If you have Google Drive or some other extra source to share, you can Put the link here. OK, so this is how you can do. Some more features are there, but that can go into premium things, but this is free as of now. So are you seeing that this is one thing? If it isn't to do and you have taken up that person to whom it is allocated, that person has taken up. This person can drag and drop it to doing section. OK, once. That doing is done. 
then it can be come it can be taken towards the done section and then all those you can add as many cards as you want so this is how whoever for whichever team inter departmental cross cultural whichever teams are there up to 50 members you can add so is it trying to yeah trying to re recalibrate but he was he was he was dumb because i told him i said um you know i could not get you what you are trying to say hello hello yes i can hear you yes okay ma'am so what i was trying to ask is what you were just explaining to us could you just uh, redo it because i didn't i didn't get the first part how you started i all jumped right. in from from the middle please i'm i'm, I'm sorry about that all right. okay, it's all right. all right okay so basically uh what we are doing is we were going to entrepreneurial leadership uh, qualities then we come across one scenario where it was asked that how can you uh, you know a company struggling with innovation and change management how you can do it then this thing started that if we want to train people if we want to manage people can we do it automatically like through some softwares or applications so we have this application trello.com this is a third party interface which you can add into your websites also but anyways at the moment we have very small team for example and we have come up with this trello interface when you come to trello.com and you sign up and log in into it it will give you these templates you can create as many templates as you want you can pick any of them it will tell you that you can create cards this way let's say if you have project resources then you have maybe agenda for the meeting or questions for next meeting you can have that card here to do list pending list blocked things what what is a blocker for you you can create as many cards how can you do it this is one board let's create one board so you can choose uh, the background and you can write here the name of your class maybe team leadership and then you can choose the visibility with whom you want to share this board and then you can start creating it create once you do that you will be having this blank bar system because you have already chosen this template of to do doing and done so it's already there now you can keep adding those things which you want to do maybe in team leadership you want to have a meeting at then you have a presentation at 10 am now in this meeting who is going to attend this click on it list down all the major details maybe you can say that this meeting is with xyz client key points to discuss are whatever and then this was emoji then you can add here the members with whom you want to share it maybe let me add my name and then you can create a label that this label you want to create and you can say that keep it on priority priority 1 this is the color code priority 1 you have told your team that i am giving the color code keep uh, take the cards according to the priority level take up the cards according to the priority level so they can see priority 1 3 4 whatever and then what you can do to manage your team with the help of this you can create a checklist let's say in this meeting at 8 am card three or four people are doing it so who is doing what how can you find out so you can create a checklist maybe um for example yeah. for example you can see notes making or minutes of the meeting who will create it of the meeting i'm adding uh, i have added this 
then mom in the meeting one of the section then its summary is another section for example so you can assign it to particular person by clicking on assign and due date when do you want it and then once that person to whom it is assigned that person can click on it to say that it is done and once that person click on it it will be shown in the activity section that this person has done this or that that person can write it in this manner at all members or at the manager i have done this thing this card can be shared this card can add attachment if any particular uh, thing you want to for example for this meeting you should know about these documents which are very confidential i'm putting it here with a, the with this note you can paste a link here and then once that person has picked this to whom it is allocated and he has started doing it it can be drag and drop to doing part and it can be taken to done section once it is done so that you all are on track and there is transparency that what is being happening is it clear is it clear hello yes yeah, yeah so, <clears throat> so so what i want to what i want to uh, to inquire is this uh, template that you are just showing us now is it yes. the one that we are going to use to submit our works or is it just something that you that you are doing uh, i'm just giving you one example that how you can you know as a leader as an entrepreneurial leader you have to find out the ways through which you can uh, you know help your team to uh, work with ease or you know what automation you can bring into the picture so that's why i was explaining you one of the uh, softwares or applications through which you can do it and this is not the exclusively uh, thing exclusive thing which is there you can come up with so many softwares to to uh, tell your team that this is how we are going to have that transparent environment and do the work likewise okay we have trello okay. we have jira so just one example was given to you okay as a part okay. of thank okay. you thanks thanks uh, yeah uh, regarding assignments i know you all are very very curious uh, to know about the assignment don't worry i'll definitely make it very very clear and post it beforehand when you have to uh, submit your assignment and what is your major assignment at the moment we are just having one class explanation uh, during the class one practical uh, software or application in every class and then we will uh, end up this thing with the homework like one assignment one question or one query to uh, tell you that you know this is what you have you are supposed to do then once everything will be done you will be given a major assignment and you will be um, you you will be given a clear picture about it okay okay right now uh, though we we are running out of time just let me wrap this up with the starting of this class second class basically what we have covered was the things which we could not cover in the last class here in today's session we had to talk about what a leader what an entrepreneur come leader can do to reach the goal and i think the foremost thing is to become self disciplined person you should know that if you are committing something you should fulfill it and you should not commit those things which you cannot fulfill and in any sort of commitment time management is the key so you should know to set up your priorities you know when you are a manager everybody with their problem will come to you now you have your own task as well you have to report your manager and people are reporting to you how will you manage and in uh, during this course of time you cannot say that 
because of the headache which i have been given by my boss i am treating you this way so you cannot uh, you cannot um, you know uh, keep it in terms of cause and effect relationship that because it is happening to me i am doing this to you so if you want to have everything in place with so much ease you should know the time management to set up your priorities to tell to to give direction to your employees or followers that because i am busy you should not tell them that you are busy that's why you are not entertaining them you have to tell meanwhile i am doing this work and i am going through the report which have been submitted by you you go to this go through this and this is the priority which we have to work upon you should know how to give them direction so how can you become more uh, organized firstly build trust why do you build trust because you know when we have stakeholders we have customers all those people who are interlinked who are making this business we should give them a reason to follow us we have to build that trust and then only we can become a leader entrepreneur is someone who has you know started this business who is taking initiative who is taking risk but with them in terms of people you should give them a reason to follow that means you have to build a trust then you have to give them a common reason to follow you a mission statement people cannot do the best work without a sense of purpose you see so that purpose has to be given to them and then you have to secure a team and how can you secure a team you have to allow i mean firstly you have to leverage your skills and then you should know each and every thing about your team like what are their strengths what are their uh, weaknesses so that you know when is the best time to put the best player on the field okay this person is good at speaking and today it is all about you know how persuasive you are in the client meeting so let's give this task to this person and you should be persuasive enough to tell that person that you have to do it and that person has to do it willingly so this is how you can secure a team and you have to come up with the delivered results it is all about when you have tr more trust clearer mission and you you know you have that ability to hire right people at the right place then you have this fly wheel like momentum and you will be able to do it now on this note i'm wrapping this class but before going ahead if you have any doubt you can ask i have put here the references these are free references you all know about google scholar right are you aware of google scholar yes yes yeah so you should know that by uh, this time when you are in masters uh, you have to uh, read through reliable sources not any random resource so you have to quote you have to cite those resources so you should be aware and uh, you know mature enough to choose wisely what is there uh, for you and what you should avoid so i have put here books from google after searching them from uh, google scholar only you go through them any one of them obviously you cannot uh, go through every um, particular book but uh, choose one and go through and then come up with new ideas do you have any doubt any comment you want to put on so yeah uh, no? the first thing is yes. i want to say th thanks for the notes uh, okay i appreciate that and the next one is i would ask because we are from different you know originalities and stuff so I, i'm i'm feeling that you please you know slow down when you explain so we'll be able to catch what you really want us to know certainly certainly and thank you so much for your feedback i'll stick to it thank you okay 
so by at this note we are um wrapping up this class see you tomorrow at the same time with another wonderful class if you think so okay take care till then bye bye thank you just before you go prof yes uh, just before you yes. go um so today's class can we have that note certainly it will be there in the section uh, where i showed you you know in the beginning of the class you were not there right uh, let me show no, you no, again. I wasn't there. okay see uh, in the beginning of the class i told you na that uh, because of some of the slides were not covered in the previous class so we had to cover it cover those so here see sixth slide we covered yesterday now today we covered seventh eighth and ninth slide okay now after that i showed you this bit for class 2 as you can see here class 2 i am uploading it right now after the completion of this class and go through it okay madam uh, before you go i will have a concern as well yes yes samin um as we are in our school yesterday's uh, our slide uh seen where it's saying homework where we are we are supposed to do a reflection of uh, yesterday's uh, uh lecture uh is it yes. about it's just a uh, personal uh brainstorming so it should have um when you write reflection let me show you this bit um see here when you write any sort of reflection the best way is to follow gibbs model see here so what this model say i told you yesterday as well i explained to you this bit that let's say one incident you come across let me let's go to images see when we say reflection we are basically reflecting on what was happened so we start with describing what was what was happened that means the class was all about this thing so yesterday we had one class it was about this thing we, this particular thing was explained so two to three lines about that then you have this feeling section what were you thinking at that time so when you were explained some topics were you already uh, you know in the impression that you knew about it about those topics or were some was there something new you learned and you you felt good about it or there was something you did not like so what were the feelings then you have to evaluation the good and bad those feelings why you were feeling that way okay then you have to conclude that if that particular thing let's say i asked you a question and you answered it and you know there is inner feeling we feel like yes i gave my best shot or no uh, it was not you know i was not there uh, up to the mark so if this particular description or incidents hap will happen again what you would do so what would be your action plan this is the gibbs like reflective cycle and you know it is applied everywhere beat management or cross functional errors everywhere 
so you can stick to it now obviously it was only the first class i wanted it to be interdisciplinary that's why i gave you this assignment this homework to mix it with the emotional aspect also so you can write it uh, with your personal experience and the educational thing which we talked about am i clear simon yes very clear great anybody else who wants to Yes, Doc. I would want to find out since uh, yesterday I missed the the lesson. Um, mm. is, does it mean that uh, for this bimester we only have one course throughout the the eight weeks of learning? No. Uh, but you know, if you go through the slide, uh, Uh, from 16th October, but we had our first class yesterday. Mm. Now this introduction to entrepreneurial leadership, it will go till Saturday. Uh, sorry, Friday. So we have five days a week class, right? So Monday to Friday, this is the thing which we have to cover. Okay. okay. Now you only missed one class which you can find here in the recording section. I think yes, you, I, I saw it already. Thank you. Great, great. Uh, you were saying something, Richard. And uh, thank uh, you so much, Doc, for giving okay, us this. Uh, uh, I was not getting it, but uh, I go through the recording. You don't you did not get it. See. If you go to this uh, team section, you can go to activity. You can go to general. Here, where you find that meeting link now, there is files section. You will see here class materials. Click on it. Here is class one. And I'm going to add class two in a bit. Is it fine? I'll call you. Yes, yes, Doc, it's fine. Great. So now I think we are all on the same page. So we will see each other tomorrow at uh, same time. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a good day there. You too. Take care. Uh, so how many times are we meeting in a week for this particular course? Um, were you told this? Were you told this? Because I'm yes, told yes. that this. Yeah. I'm told that this class is going to happen every day at 9.30 till 10.30. I mean, sorry, uh, your and mine timings are different. We are from different zones. But yes. So, you get so it is different. It is daily. Don't worry about it. You can join it. Okay, okay ma'am. Okay, ma I think, uh, hello. Yes, Ki? Okay, I think maybe uh, all these questions are arising because uh, we have got uh, like timetables whereby there are different uh, courses per day. So that's what that's oh. why people are asking to say, are we just cruising with one course or we have to, because we have good courses. For example, mine like today, I think it was, my timetable is showing a certain course. So I think that's why oh. these people are asking. Right, right. OK, let me then talk to uh, Mr. Joshua and I uh, maybe Joseph. Yes, uh, Dr. Joseph, and I'll come back to you with this uh, query. OK. Yeah, that's fine. But as of now, just stick by it that tomorrow we are meeting and uh, at the same time. 